All right, praise the good Lord. Isn't it good to be back in the house of the Lord today? And it's so good to see each and every one of you here with us this morning to worship the Lord. And I see some visitors out there today. And if you are visiting with us, we're glad to have you here at Altima Hall Baptist Church. And if you would, please just raise your hand. Ushers are coming forward and they'd love to give you some more information and some things concerning the church. And uh, thank you for coming. It's good to have a good friend, some good friends of ours from Salisbury. Preacher friend of mine, Robin Albright and his precious wife, Debbie. They've come up this morning to visit with us, have some fellowship with us. Robin really helped me along when I was just a babe in Christ, hadn't been saved long. He was telling me things about the Bible. It was just absolutely fascinating. And I hope he'll be able to sing that special song in just a little bit that he's always sung. And did you bring it with you, Rob? Huh? You didn't bring it? Oh. But anyway, it's good to have them here with us. But also, other visitors, God bless you for being here today. Also, the youth are still at their winter retreat this morning. I think there's about 23 or 26 of those uh, at the winter retreat. And uh, we want to be much in prayer for them. I think they're having a fantastic time. Next Saturday, the children are going to be taking a trip to a nature museum. And they're going to meet here at the church at 830 next Saturday morning. Go ahead and uh, get their breakfast uh, before they come to church. But they will be having a picnic lunch during their outing. And it's going to be $7 per person. And there's going to be a sign-up sheet in the hall. And uh, so please take advantage of that. Also, there's still a lot of Christmas cards over here in the vestibule of the new building. And uh, you want to go by there and check those out because them cards could be filled with a lot of gift cards. Uh, I mean, you know, and uh, if it gets down to the point where, you know, we're going to have to do something with them, then, you know, I guess me and the deacons will have to just go through them all and... If there's gift cards in there, of course, we'll have to do something with them. But anyway, <laughs> go check those out. Also, the offering envelopes are in, and uh, we'd love for you to go ahead and get your offering envelopes. That's what we use to keep up with your giving and uh, for your tithing records at the end of the year. And uh, you got the uh, budget in there in the uh, bulletin this morning. And just to remind you, of course, as you're giving, uh, we got some wonderful things that we're looking forward to really being able to do. Uh, here through the church. And one of them is build a new fellowship building, uh, Family Life Center, and there's a fund set up for that already, and it's growing. Uh, but also we want to get a bus or a van or something of that nature, and our vans are getting pretty old, and there's a fund there uh, for those vans there. So uh, just be much in prayer about those things, and as soon as it gets to where something can be done one way or another with those funds, uh, we'll try our best to get that done, all right? But let's really get in the mood of worship right now. Let's really set everything else aside. And as we begin to sing, I want you to focus on God. Focus on Jesus Christ. Focus and allow the Holy Spirit just to have control of your heart and your soul at this time. Brother Gary is celebrating a number 34 anniversary. Amen, Brother Gary. Bless your heart. Amen. I think uh, Annie Hazep's got a 94th birthday coming up pretty soon. Amen. Bless your heart as well. Amen. Glory to God. Well, let's start out now. Let us worship God in spirit and truth as Brother Mike comes and leads us in our opening song. All right. If you want to stand with us this morning as we begin opening up, we just want to worship the Lord this morning and sing, at, sing with us as we sing, We Believe. We believe in Jesus Christ. 
We believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He conquered death. We believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's coming back again. We believe. Father, we are so thankful that we're able to gather together here this morning in your precious name. And we are feeling, dear Heavenly Father, the presence of your Holy Spirit, dear God, touching and filling our souls. Lord, let there be nothing in our heart. Let there be no unconfessed sin that, dear God, would hinder us from being able, dear Heavenly Father, today to receive what you have in store for us. We're praying for that fresh anointing, dear God, this morning upon the choir and the singing and the message of the hour. And Lord, we're praying for the souls of those that are lost to be saved. And we're praying for the revival of the saints. Lord, we're praying for this nation, dear Heavenly Father, that you would tear down every stronghold of Satan, dear God, and open the eyes of people that they might see what is truth. We pray for all the missionaries, dear God, throughout the world, and we're praying for everybody that is in the military as well. We're praying for all the law enforcement officers, dear God, the emergency personnel, dear Heavenly Father, and Lord, most of all, we are praying that today throughout the world, dear God, you're going to be glorified. We're praying that souls are going to be saved. We are praying that, dear Heavenly Father, great and mighty things are going to be accomplished for your honor and for your glory. Lord, just have your way now, dear God, for these things I ask. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. In heavenly armor we'll enter the land The battle belongs to the Lord No weapon that fashioned against us will stand The battle belongs to the Lord We sing glory, honor Power and strength to the Lord We sing glory, honor Power and strength Oh, 
When the power of darkness comes in like a flood He raised up a standard, the power of His blood
Good morning. Start with everybody's invited back tonight. Hey. It's yeah. going to be cold, but we got heat. Let us pray. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we call upon your name this morning, thanking you, Father, for the many things you've done for us, and thank you, Father, for what you're going to do for us, Father. I pray to your Father a special blessing upon each and every one that's come out this morning. I pray that there be there be souls here that are lost today, Father, that don't know you as Savior, that they would walk the aisle, kneel at this altar, and accept you as Lord and Savior before the day's over, man. I pray to your Father that you would help us to use these tithes and offerings in the way that you would see fit, that your will would be done in everything that we say and do. For it's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen.
Yes. All right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Nothing like the peace of God that passes all understanding. It's nothing like being able to have joy in the darkest of moments. It's nothing like being able to unload your burdens upon someone who cares for us all. If you would please now this morning turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 16. The book of Acts chapter 16 and this morning I'd like to begin reading with verse number 6 through verse number 10. If you will, please stand with me now, those of you that are able, as I begin to read from God's precious word. Now, when they had gone throughout Pergara and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, I want to ask you something. Has there ever been a time when God has stopped you from doing something? And even if it might have seemed good to you, or it might have been something that you would have thought of as being all right with God, but has there ever been a time when God wouldn't allow you to do something? And that's what Paul was facing right here in this passage of scripture because he wanted to go to Asia, but the Holy Spirit forbade him. But now look again, verse number seven. After they were come to Messiah, they essayed to go to Berthina, but the Spirit suffered them not. Paul was anxious to serve the Lord. He wanted to do something great for God. He wanted to spread the gospel to all these different areas, but there were times when God stopped him. Has there ever been a time when God has stopped you? The Bible goes on to say, and they passing by Malaysia came down to Taurus, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Our Heavenly Father, we have gathered here today and it is no surprise to you that we are here. God, you know to everyone that would have been here today, dear Heavenly Father, and you have prepared something for each and every one of us. Something that we all need. It might be a word of encouragement, dear Heavenly Father, but it also may be a word of correction. It might be that, dear Heavenly Father, today you're going to do something wonderful on behalf of some who have gathered here today that are in need of a special miracle. There may be others here today, dear Heavenly Father, that are seeking direction for their life. There's others here today, dear Heavenly Father, that are lost and they are undone and Heavenly Father, only you know this for sure, but this may be their last opportunity to be saved. There's some here today, dear Heavenly Father, as you know, that are listening to your word this morning, that you may call out of this world before next Sunday. They being saved, they'll be able to come and be with you in heaven, but those that are lost will open their eyes in that terrible place called hell. God, you know all things. You know what's good for us. And you know what's bad. God, you know the steps that you have ordered for us. God, I pray that today we will all be in your perfect will and accept, dear Heavenly Father, your leadership and your guidance. For these things I ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen. I got to thinking about the providence of God last Sunday morning. As of course you know, we called off all the services this last Sunday because of the severe weather that was here at this particular time. And all during that time prior to last Sunday morning, we were all probably making plans to be at church. 
We were preparing ourselves to be able to preach. We were preparing to be able to teach. Many of you were preparing to sing. We were all preparing to worship God. We were all preparing to, to uh, praise God. We were all preparing and looking forward to having a good time of fellowship with other Christian people. But we had to cancel all of our services this last week. And I couldn't help but think about the providence of God. Because even though we were making preparations and even though we would have been ready to have had a service last Sunday morning, last Sunday night, and the Sunday school teachers and early worship and all these things would have went just like they normally go. But God knew all along we wouldn't be here that day. I got to thinking about a message that I had heard many, many, many years ago about the providence of God. And I got to remembering how that that message would say uh, at points that sometimes God providentially hinders us. And I got to looking through the Bible for that phrase, providentially hindered. The phrase providentially hindered is not in the Bible. Matter of fact, if you through, look throughout the Bible, you're not going to find the word providence, but maybe once at the most twice. But you look throughout the Bible and you can find that God knows the future. And God guides our paths according to his knowledge. And there are times when God, thank goodness, intervenes in our life. Because there's times when I would have turned left thinking it would be good when God knew that there might have been something waiting for me in that direction and he wanted me to turn right and I'm thankful that he intervened and I hope that you are thankful at times when God gives you directions for your life and when God intervenes for you. The providence of God here really is a very important thing that you can find throughout the Bible. And we need to understand what does the word providence mean. The word providence means to foresee, to perceive in advance, to note beforehand, to know or to think in advance. God told Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, in Jeremiah chapter number one and verse number five, he said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. God knew we were coming before we were even conceived. God knew we were going to be born before we were ever born. And God had a purpose for every single one of our lives even before we entered into the womb. That tells me for sure that abortion is dead wrong. That tells me for sure without any doubt whatsoever that abortion needs to be stopped. I don't know how many times we've all prayed for certain things and I have prayed sincerely for a healing of cancer. I prayed for healings of MS and diabetes and I have prayed for God to send someone or to do something very special and you wanna know something? God may have already planned to send somebody. God may have already sent somebody to cure cancer. God may have already sent somebody to cure MS. But because we have become so lax and condoning in our society, we may have allowed some of these precious people to be taken before they were ever even able to do what God intended for them to do. I believe in the providence of God. Matter of fact, we can see it throughout the Bible. We can see how that when even the wise men had come to absorb the baby Jesus, they didn't realize that they were in grave danger from Herod, the murderer. Even though Herod tried to put a front and tried to allow them to think everything would be all right. And Herod tried to give them direction for their departure. And Herod wanted them to come back to see him and, and all these different things. But God knew what Herod was up to. And so God spoke to those wise men and to Joseph. And God led them in a path of safety. Because if they would have went back to Herod, Herod would have probably killed them. 
If they would have went back and Joseph would have not have listened to God and taken Jesus to Egypt, then Herod would have killed the baby Jesus as well. There are times when God intervenes in our lives. There is times when the providence of God, which means he knows all things. He knows what's gonna happen tomorrow. He knows what's gonna happen before this day is over. As a matter of fact, we can sit here and we can remember how that the Bible clearly tells us in the book of Psalms chapter 37 and verse number 23, how that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse number nine, it goes on to say a man's heart is this, devises his way, but the Lord directeth his path. Friends, God says, I know the plans I have for you. And again, he's speaking to Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse number 11. For I know the thoughts that I thought toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Who knows that, like he was telling Esther, that this might be the very hour for which you were created. This could be the very day that all that God has been doing through your life may come to that one point as such an hour as this. God is working in our lives and he controls a lot of things that goes on all around us all the time. He knew we were not gonna be able to meet here last Sunday, even though we had made proper preparations to be here. Why did God hinder us from coming? Why didn't God allow us to come? And he could have sent the ice storm at a different time or all these different things. It was all in his making. It was all in his power. But yet God allowed this to come to pass and we were not able to come to church last Sunday morning. We were providentially hindered. There's no question about that. So why does God allow these things to happen sometimes to all of us? because he's got a plan and a purpose for our lives. And the Bible tells us here that all things work out for the good. How could any good work out of the fact we weren't able to be here last Sunday? The book of Romans chapter eight, verse 28, it tells us clearly there. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. There is a way that seemeth right unto man, and you know, it would have seemed right for me to be here last Sunday. It would have seemed right for you to have been here last Sunday, but the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 14, and verse number 12, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end there are the ways of death. We don't know what could have happened last Sunday. We don't know what Satan might have had in store for us last Sunday. But God did know he has the providence to understand what might transpire. And I don't understand why possibly we were not able to be here, but God had a purpose for it. God has a reason for everything that happens in our life. And sometimes there is no doubt about it. He intervenes in our life. Sometimes we can make the plans, but God's got other plans. Sometimes we wanna do this, but God knows best. And God will interfere and he won't allow us to do this in a certain time or a certain way. And then we find out that in, as we look back onto these situations, that God was always right. Things were gonna work out. The Bible tells us in the book of James chapter four and verse number 14, whereas as you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For you should say, ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. Do you not remember the story of Jonah? When God said, Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh. You know what Jonah decided to do? He decided to go the exact opposite direction. He decided to go to Tarshish. He thought he had pulled the wool over God's eyes. He went down to a ship, got on board the ship, had the money to pay his own fare. He was at such peace, he was able to go down into the ship and go to sleep. But he was directly going against the will of God. And God just about killed him. 
You know how the story goes that the storm came up and the ship was breaking apart and the sailors on the ship were doing everything they could. But I want to tell you, you're going to find yourself in situations when nobody can help you, especially if you're going against God. And when God has got a purpose for your life and when God's got a mission for your life, you can't change that mission and you'll not be successful, you'll not be happy, you'll not never have peace or joy until you're in the perfect will of God. As you recall the story about Jonah, Jonah was cast overboard. He was swallowed by a whale. And I believe with all my heart that if Jonah would not have repented while he was in the belly of that whale, that God would have taken his life. There is such a thing as a sin unto death. People can try to go against God, but you will fail constantly when you do. We look in the Bible again at a prophet, and God told this prophet in the book of Kings, chapter number 13, that he was to go home a certain way. But then another prophet came to this one prophet who had been directed by God to do a certain thing a certain way. And this other prophet said, oh, don't worry about that. Just come on back home with me. I'm going to feed you and take care of you before you make this journey back. And so the prophet came back and he listened to this false prophet and he ate with the man and he drank with the man. And, and then it come time for this prophet of God to leave and he got on his ass and he began to leave the area and God allowed a lion to come along and to devour that prophet. I'm here to tell you this morning that God has a purpose and a plan for all of our lives. And we're not going to be able to be successful, happy, or have peace unless we're in God's perfect will. Even when that one prophet was devoured by the lion, the people of the village, when they would go by and see his carcass laying there in the ditch, and remarkably, here was that donkey standing there by the carcass, but also the lion was standing there showing God's intervention. God had told him to go a certain way, and the man didn't do it. The man thought he was getting by with it, and the man thought that, well, it's probably all right with God. He went back, he enjoyed the meal, he enjoyed the fellowship, but he disobeyed God. He went in an opposite direction, and God took his life. Same scenario with Jonah. Same scenario with a lot of us today. And when I look at this and I see what he says there in the latter part of chapter number 13 of 1 Kings, and it's not on the board there, but you may want to look it up in your Bibles, 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 26, it is the man of God who disobeyed unto the word of the Lord, therefore the Lord hath devoured him unto, delivered him unto the lion, which has torn him and slayed him according to the word of God. There's things that are happening in our lives that sometimes we don't understand, but we just need to realize that God's got a purpose and a plan. And there's sometimes that God will hinder us from doing certain things, and we need to realize that there's a reason for that. God's got a plan. We all need to be in God's perfect will. Where are you at today? Are you in God's perfect will right now? Where are you today? Are you in your own way, going your own, doing your own thing? Or are you in the perfect will of God? I know that you're in church this morning. I know you're sitting in a pew at Altamaha Hall Baptist Church. But do you know for sure, 100% certain, where you will be in two hours from now? Now, I know a lot of you are hoping you're still not going to be in church. But no one knows for sure where we're going to be and what's going to be going on in our life two hours from now. We have our plans, but we don't know what can happen over the next two hours. But God does. And that's called the providence of God. Here's where we are physically, yes, but where are you at spiritually? Do you know that you are in the will of God? He knew that you would be here today. Remember what the word providence means, and it literally means that he has foresight. He was perceived in advance. He knows things ahead of time. That's what God is all about. When I think about the many different passages of scriptures throughout the Bible, about the providence of God and 
how that God directs lives and how that sometimes it's hard to see God at work in our lives in certain situations. But I'm reminded of, of Joseph in the Bible, starting in the book of Genesis, chapter number 20. And Joseph, of course, was the favorite son of Jacob. And Joseph received a special coat of many colors from his dad. And Joseph's brothers become so jealous of him and they couldn't really stand him. Matter of fact, they wanted to kill him. And you know the story about Joseph. And you know how that Joseph's dad sent Joseph to check on his brothers who had taken the herd to a pasture further away from home. And his dad said, I want you to go make sure that everything's going all right. It was his favorite son. And when Joseph got near to where his other brothers were, his other brothers began to connive and scheme. His other brothers couldn't stand the sight of him coming. And his other brothers wanted to kill him. They took him and they threw him in a ditch, in a hole. They were trying to decide what they were going to do with him. And here comes a caravan of slave traders along. So they decide they'll just take Joseph instead of killing him out of that pit and they'll just sell him to these slave traders. And those slave traders were on their way down to Egypt. And those slave traders sold Joseph to those Egyptians, Potiphar by name especially. And there was Joseph who had come from being the favorite son of a very wealthy man to here he is a slave. And there he is in this situation where it takes time for him to get to a place where the Potiphar begins to see that this is a good man and and able to do good work. And so Potiphar puts him in charge of his household. And, And there Joseph had over some time gotten a better position. But you know the story how that Potiphar's wife really went after Joseph and Joseph kept denying her and denying her. And finally Potiphar's wife just started accusing uh, Joseph and lying about him. And and so Potiphar comes home and now his life, it it turns to worse again and he's thrown in jail. Now is this all in God's plan? Did God know all this was gonna happen? And here Joseph is in jail. I'm not talking about overnight. I'm talking about in jail for years. And while he's in jail, here is some servants of the Pharaoh and Joseph interprets their dreams. And one of the servants were set free and was able to go back to the Pharaoh. The other one was put to death. Joseph told them that's exactly what's gonna happen. But Joseph wanted to get out of that scenario and he wanted to get out of that situation that he told the cupbearer, please, when you get back to Pharaoh, please don't forget me. I've been here in this prison. Please tell Pharaoh and and get Pharaoh to get me out of this situation. Guess what? You know the story. Cupbearer forgot him. And so for two more years, Joseph remained in that terrible prison. But then you know the story how that Pharaoh had to dream about the famine that was going to come, seven good years and then seven bad years. Nobody could interpret the dream. And then all of a sudden the cupbearer is reminded that here's somebody over there in prison that interpreted his dreams. And so he tells Pharaoh about Joseph and Joseph is cleaned up and Joseph is brought back before Pharaoh and Joseph interprets the dreams of Pharaoh and they begin to make preparations for the good years of wheat and harvest and then they were ready when the seven bad years come along. God knew all this was going to happen all along, all the way back when Joseph came to his brothers and they threw him in a pit. God knew that down the road, years from now, there's going to be a famine in the land. He had everything planned out in Joseph's life. Even though it wasn't a pleasant experience, even though it wasn't an easy experience, even though there was a lot of hardships involved, God was having a plan that was putting everything in place And Joseph was going to be used of God, not just to help the Egyptians, but if you read the whole story of Joseph in chapter in the book of Genesis, you're going to find out that Joseph tells his brothers that God had sent him through his life's journey so that his family would be spared. Now I think that's the key and a motivation for all of us. That we go through this walk of life and things are not always going to be easy and there's going to be some difficult times and we're going to go through trials and we're going to go through tribulations. But God's got a plan that even through trials and tribulations, it might just very well boil down to the point that it might help some of our family to be saved. I don't know 
know what's going to happen in the next two hours of time. I don't know what's going to happen in the next nine minutes. But God does. I don't know if you're going to be able to be here next week. God does. I don't know if some of you that are lost will die and wind up in hell before this week is over. But God does. But God has brought you here today to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. To find out how to be saved, but the choice is going to be yours. Do you want to be saved or do you want to leave here lost and then possibly wind up dead and opening up your eyes in hell before this week is over? I don't know what's going to happen in the next two hours of time. Some of you may die this week. Some of you may die this afternoon. I don't know that. I might die this afternoon. But because I'm saved, I'm not going to hell, thank God. I'm going to heaven. Now, I don't know what God's plans are for me. God's already got mapped out. And if my time comes, which is appointed unto all men, we're all going to die at some certain time. Lost or saved, you're going to die. And you're either going to go to heaven or you're going to wind up in hell. That's the plain truth of the matter. I don't know what all is in store for you before this day is over. I don't know what's going to happen in the next hour of time. I don't know uh, if you go out to your car in a few moments and you have a flat tire. And you might get upset and you might get mad. But friend, maybe God's got a reason for that tire to be flat. You might go out there in just a little bit and not be able to start your car. And you might get upset. But just like God intervened when Paul wanted to go to Asia, when Paul wanted to go to certain places, God forbade it. God hindered it in a certain way. God had another purpose for him. Just like when Jonah wanted to go to Tarshish, God intervened. Just like when that prophet wouldn't listen to God's instruction, God intervened. Listen, God intervenes in our lives today. And it just might be you might wind up with a flat tire because God knows what Satan's got waiting for you down the road. I want to tell you something. God wants to destroy every one of us. God would like to have all of us uh, dead and, and done with. He'd like to sift us all like wheat. I don't know what's going to happen in the next few moments of time, but God does. But I do know this. <laughs> You might walk out of this church today and you might trip out there and fall. But you are count that a blessing if that happens. Because God may have plans for you to keep you safe from something worse. You might wind up in the hospital before 1.30 today. But God's got a purpose in that. There might have been something worse waiting for you down the road. I don't know. Or it might be that right now somebody's getting ready to clock in out here at Alamance Memorial Hospital that would be assisting you if you're checking in at 1.30 today at the hospital. It just might be that God might use you to reach that person. Are you willing to do whatever it takes that one soul might be saved? Are you willing to go through the times like Jacob, what Joseph went through and, and all the rest that you can read in the Bible that went through all kinds of difficult times just so that one of your family members might be saved? Would you be willing to go through that? Joseph told him, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And sometimes there's some things that are going to happen to us that are not going to be very pleasant. But through those experiences, it might be that some of our family, our children, our spouses, some of our friends might be saved. Now, are you willing to do that? But I tell you, I don't know what's going to happen in the next hour. The rapture could take place. Woo! I'm ready for that. But if the rapture takes place, I don't know. God says no man does when it's going to happen. I can't help but believe we've got to be close. I really believe we've got to be living in the latter days. I really believe that. And I really believe that at any moment it could transpire 
trumpet of God could sound, the, the shout from glory could come, and, and all those of us that are saved in Jesus Christ will leave out of this world. But then that means you that are lost will be left behind. I don't know what's going to happen, but God does. There's all kinds of things that can happen. God's got a purpose in each and every one of them, but I want to tell you some things. God knows you was here today, and God has a purpose for your being here. He has a purpose for me being here today. And it might just be for such an hour as this. For such an hour as this, all that you've gone through, all that you've faced, and I mean not just for a few moments, not just for a few hours, but some of you may have been going through some of these situations for years and years and years. That at this moment, God's going to use that somehow to save somebody in your family. For such an hour as this, you may have been going through all kinds of situations in your life and God is right now going to reward your faithfulness by healing you. By performing a miracle on your behalf. By reaching that sun or that daughter that's going wayward by bringing that home back together. God in his providence may have allowed a lot of things to happen in your life for such an hour as this. Maybe today God is going to reward you Faithfully. Could be that Publishers Clearinghouse might be waiting for somebody out there. Johnny, you want to get a plate and stand out there at the door just in case? We don't know, do we? But there's times when God just has to take over and direct our paths. Because we'd go the wrong way. We'd do the wrong thing. And then we'd miss out. God's got something for us. And God's working in our lives even when we're going through difficult times. Even when it takes a while for it to come and go. And sometimes it seems like, well, things are getting better. And then all of a sudden, bam! get knocked down again. And you get back up on your feet and you think, well, maybe this all pay. Bam! You get knocked back down again. But if God can use those experiences to reach somebody, would you be willing to go through that and more to know that they'll be able to go to heaven with you that God will be able to save their souls, that God will bless you and them as well. Would you? Some of you here today may be burdened. And right now, today, could be the hour that God is saying, come unto me and I'll give you rest. You've gone through all these situations in your life to find out that God has humbled you and that God wants to take them burdens now away from you. Why don't you come this morning and lay them down at the feet of Jesus? Why don't you come? Maybe today there's a special something in your life that you need God to do. And maybe right now, right here today, God is wanting to do that for you. God has brought you here today for such an hour as this. I don't know what all God's got in store, but I know that God can do all things. God can touch you today, help you today, 
And no matter what might be going on in your life today, just let God just continue to lead you and guide you. Let's stand to our feet. Oh, Heavenly Fathers, we bow in your presence here today, dear God. There's lots of times in our life, dear God, that I don't understand why this is happening or why you allowed this to come to pass. But God, one thing's for sure you've showed me over the years. That God, all things are going to work out for the good. And God, no matter what trials or what problems or troubles, whatever it might be that we may have to go through, and no matter how long we may have to go through them, somehow, some way, Almighty God, there's going to be some good that's going to come out of it. God, continue to intervene in our lives. Continue, dear Heavenly Father, to guide us and give us directions, dear God. For those that might be here today that are lost, Almighty God, I pray that today, that dear Heavenly Father, you've been able to break through every barrier and you've been able to touch that heart. And Almighty God, I pray in the name of Jesus that today they'll give their heart and their heart and their life and their soul to you, dear God. I pray for others who may be going through a difficult time who don't understand why. I pray that today they'll just come and say, Lord, your will be done. Lord, I don't understand it now and I may not understand it this week. But God, I'm just going to just turn it all over to you. God, I want you to use this experience in my life. I want you to use it somehow to reach somebody, maybe my family, maybe my children. Maybe it's a friend, maybe it's a neighbor. God, I want you to use this. I want them to see Jesus in my life, even when times are filled with trouble and heartaches. I want them to see Jesus in me. Maybe you need to come this morning and just let God touch your life and assure you, he's got it all under control. He's got it all under control. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? God bless you each and every one for coming today and I hope you have a blessed day ahead and keep lifting up Jesus before every person you come in contact with and if you do have a flat tire out there just go ahead and praise God anyway and know that God's got a purpose God's working in your life even though it's a difficult time but let's bow our heads now and be dismissed our Heavenly Father I thank you for the privilege you've given us today Continue to go with us, Almighty God, and your will be done in our lives. For these things I ask in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless y'all today. Amen.